Hey guys, welcome to the final section of uh, logarithms and exponentials, and we're going to start talking about natural logarithms, okay, which is a special type of logarithm when we have base e on our logarithm. So the function y equals e to the x has an inverse, and the inverse is y equals ln of x. That's the natural log of x. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is solving equations that have natural log and also uh, equations that have e to some power, and we're going to see how to handle that. So our first example, we're just going to apply the properties of, of logarithms to natural logs. And so what they want us to do here is 2 times the natural log of 15 minus the natural log of 75. We want to write that as a single logarithm. Okay, so you're actually going to apply the quotient rule because we're subtracting uh, two logarithms, and they're the same logarithms, natural log, same base e. All right, so we notice we have the 2 on the outside here with the 15. So when we start rewriting this single logarithm, that 2 is going to be on the power uh, on 15 as a power of 2. So that's why we get natural log of 15 squared over 75. Now, since this is a single logarithm, we know that 225, which is 15 squared, over 75 is equal to 3. So we actually have the natural log of 3. Okay, so that's using some properties. And now we're going to start solving some equations. Okay, so in the second example here, we want to know what are the solutions. Example 2, what are the solutions here of natural log of x minus 3 squared equals 4? There's going to be two of them. So first thing we have to think about doing is rewriting our exponential uh, equation, or excuse me, our lo natural log equation in exponential form. And we're going to take e to the both sides. We're going to raise each side to the e. And when you do that, since e and natural log are inverses, they're going to undo each other, just like square roots and squares do to one another. So here's our original equation. We're going to take e to both sides. And basically, you're raising each side to the power of e. And when you do that, you cancel out the e in the natural log, and we have e to the fourth. Now, to undo that square, okay, we're going to square root both sides. When you do that, you have to remember that e to the fourth is equal to e squared squared. That's why we have e squared here. And normally, when you take a square root, it's plus or minus. So we're going to keep that in. When you square root of square, you undo the operation, so guess what? The base is left. So you have x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus e squared. To solve for x, you simply add 3 to both sides, but you have two solutions, 3 plus e squared and 3 minus e squared. There's 3 plus e squared. It's approximately 10.39, and 3 minus e squared is about negative 4.39. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to check that answer. Because we always want to check for extraneous solutions. And what I want to show you here is that these answers are so close that it's OK they're a little off. So we plug in to the natural log of x minus 3 squared. Does that equal 4? Well, plug in 10.4, 10.39 in for x. And we get something that's so close to 4 that we're going to count it. That's OK. It's not extraneous. And same thing when we plug in negative 4.39. Now you may be asking, well, Mr. Bennett, this is a negative number in natural log. Yeah, but you're squaring it, so it'll end up being positive, this, the number inside. So again, so close that it's equal to 4. And these should be approximately the same because they're solutions. Okay, So just check in our solution there. They're not extraneous, even though they're a little bit off, but the difference is so insignificant that it's good enough. All right, so larger example here. We're not having a natural log in this example. We're having e raised to the 2x. So like other equations with radicals, what you really have to do is get that e by itself first. So here, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, and we're going to be left with 14 on the right and 4 times e to the 2x on the left. Now, divide each side by 4. We eliminate the 4 here, and we have 3 and a half left on the right. Again, we're going to take the natural log of each side. The natural log and e will cancel out, and you're actually just going to be left with the power 2 of x, 2 to the x, 2 times x, excuse me. 
and the natural log of 3.5. Now I'm going to leave that for now. So I have 2x is equal to the natural log of 3.5. Just divide each side by 2 and we get 0.626 approximately. Remember, don't divide 4 by 2 in this case, or excuse me, not 4, 3.5 by 2 because this 2 is now with the natural log. It's not a single natural logarithm like the first example. The natural log is only here. So do ln of 3.5 on the calculator, get an answer, divide it by 2, and you're left with about 0.626. The last little example I wanted to show you is just how to simplify and really kind of hit home that natural log and E are inverses. In this first example, you have natural log of E squared over 2. Now, the natural log of E, those are going to cancel out, and you're going to be just left with 2 over 2. The exponent's the only thing that's left, okay? Uh, and the idea here is that if we simplified, you'd have 2 times the natural log times E. Okay, and then they would uh, simplify one another out. That's why we have the 2 over 2, and that's just 1. Again, the natural log of E, that's just 1 over 4. Not much to simplify there. I just wanted to show you what that looks like uh, when you take the natural log of, of E, or you take E and you raise it uh, to the, LN, uh, the power of ln. Those cancel each other out as well. So I hope uh, this helps you guys with the study of natural logarithms. Uh, we're not going to spend time graphing them even though uh, there's an option that we could, but we're not focused on that. We just want to really focus on solving these natural log equations and uh, equations involving uh, base E. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, uh, email me. Thanks guys.